Just friends, welcome back to another day of the grind. Playing as white today. So I've been playing the London system a lot this week as white. And I have been enjoying it. So I'm going to go ahead and play it this game. Just defend d4 with the knight on f3. Pretty straightforward so far. Get the bishop out. A lot of people have suggested the London system. Probably over the course of the past month or so. And um, I finally decided to take their advice seriously this week. <laughs> Could push up h3 just in case he's planning on doing something weird. But maybe I just leave that for the next move. Maybe a better idea is just knight on d2 in case he goes e4. That's an idea. Could also just get the bishop out to d3 here too. I'll just play the bishop move. Give myself the option to castle if needed. Probably could have attacked his knight here since I had two defenders on e5. It's a possibility. Just simplify the game really fast. Uh, no, but then I need to remember that I removed the defender on d4 there. I'll go ahead and castle. I'll play knight d2 next move. Playing Beradotos from Vietnam, Turkey. I always forget that one. Did have the option to attack his knight there uh, before he played a6. Maybe I should have done that and just tried to kick his knight back. Okay, so he's got his light square bishop sort of not quite activated, but he has the option to take it out. Hmm. I guess it's something like c4. I don't think e5 is a good idea here. I'll just play c4. Um, I have two attackers on c4. Two defenders, rather. Defender's probably the correct word. Oh, uh, yeah, I kind of figured that. Kind of figured that would happen. I could always try pushing the pawn up to c5. It's an option. Then my dark square bishop will kind of be blocked in though. Um, I'll opt to just play safely. Cool. Could always just go for the bishop trade here as well. Just simplify the game. Maybe it'd be, it'd be a better idea just to develop a rook here too. Uh, let's think, if I push up, he's got... Hmm. Could push e5. So e5, he could take... I'm just going to try it. I should come out ahead on this exchange.
So he chose not to take Hmm. Let's think about this. He takes, I can take. He can take back with his knight. Attacking my bishop, and then my bishop's going to be trapped in. Well, could go to like g5, but I think now he's got two attackers on e5. So I don't quite want to remove a defender. I'm almost tempted to just go... Hmm. Let me see if there's just like a more forcing move I can play here. Well, let me think about this. Maybe this is just an equal trade. You know, if I take, he takes. He can take the pawn back. Then my bishop is attacked, and then what? Um, let me think about this for a sec. Hmm. There's always the option to like kick the knight too. No, but then that just loses a bishop for no reason. Could always just fall back. Hmm. Could fall back to b1. Still maintain the attack. Um, I'm just going to do that. So far, so good. So far, so good, methinks. Spent way too much time on that move. Two minutes. It's like way more than I would like to spend. I'm trying to think of what the other possibility there was. Maybe I could have gone e2 with the queen. So it develops my queen. Gives me the option to defend d3. And add another attacker to e4 at the same time. That was a possibility. I'm guessing he'll most likely just fall back with his light square bishop, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting there. Now I have the choice between trying to kick his knight or kicking his knight out of the way here. Let's see where his knight could go. His knight could go g5. His knight could go back to e8. Could always go to d5. So I kind of like just getting his knight out of my side of the board. His knight on f6 has a lot of places to go. Interesting. Can't really block it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything there. His knight really has to just go back to c6, right? Maybe there's some other move that he could force on me, but... That's all I see at the moment. If he falls back to c6, I believe I just trap his bishop in. 
um, by going to a4 with the pawn. Just go e3. I don't know why he's so fixated on this early attack. I'd rather keep the bishops if I could. Hmm. I have a weak pawn here. I don't want to lose that pawn. Could always go something like c2. Defend the pawn. Oh uh, no, but I really just don't want to lose this. This knight. Um, yeah. Bit of a forced move here by him. Maybe I just try to kick his knight at this point. I could either attack the bishop on b3, or I could develop the rook, or I could try to kick his knight. I kind of like the idea of just kicking his knight sort of further down the road. It does give him the ability to escape, though, on f5. So I'll just opt to attack his bishop. This will almost force him to go back to b5 since this pawn is hanging now. He's been really aggressive with throwing his pieces on my side of the board so far. I just always need to keep this threat in mind. I always get into trouble with the bishops in front of the king like that. There's a there's a term for it. It's some Italian thing, right? Fanchetto or something like that. Cool. So this seemed like it just won the exchange. I know he has the ability to go bishop or queen. Um, no, he actually doesn't even have that option. Right, so if he were to retake. Yeah. There's no reason not to take that. Pawns hanging. If he wants to go with the bishop, I'll happily trade off there. Um, should be able to win that exchange. I can always pressure his bishop with uh, e5 here, but I also would like to get this rook out at the same time. I need to be really mindful too of a uh, possible back rank. So at some point I probably do want to open up an escape square for my king as well. And uh, kind of an escape for the bishop too, if needed. I think he's just going to be forced to either push pawn b5 or go rook b8. So I'm really surprised he didn't go for that. I don't know what that accomplishes, but it does get me free pawn. Hmm. Where was he going with that? Let's think this through before we just make an, ab an abrupt move. Free pawns are really hard to turn down. I have two defenders on d4. I don't know. The free pawn kind of just has to get captured. And then I have another free pawn, depending on what he does. Potentially. I don't know how free that pawn will be, but...
This does remove a defender. I wonder if there's something else, a bit more forcing I can kind of do in the meantime. Hmm. I could attack his queen, but I just feel like I'm getting too aggressive here. So he, he will be able to capture my d4 pawn if I move back here. Hmm. Oh, I do have this nice attack too. I'll just pressure his queen. Maybe I should have just should have taken the pawn instead. Maybe that was more valuable. Okay, lots of big threats coming in here. <laughs> Do have a pawn. Let's see, where can I move this to where I'm still defending? Possibly just go back here. Oh, you know what? Why don't we just trade queens off? I like that move. Putting the rook on this file sounds fun. Hmm. Getting a rook on the seventh is always fun too. I need to be super mindful of my back rank. I'll put a, I'll put a rook on his back rank. I always have move like uh, I always have a move like uh, say d seven. I'm happy to just fall back here. Tax the pawn if he wants to push up. He's really exposed his king. Okay, that gets us a free pawn. I wonder if there's something more forcing I can do. I could just try to trade off bishops too, but the free pawn seems too good. And I am still defending d4 as well. So yeah, um, really just need to focus on getting um, my rook out. Hmm. Could go for a bit of a threatening move here and just trade the bishops off. Maybe I just play it somewhat safer. I could slowly inch my knight towards his king as well. His rooks have been very inactive this game. There's three defenders on e5, so there's almost no reason not to do this. Nice fork there by him. Suppose I can... Suppose I could play a counter move and attack his rook at the same time. Kind of a bummer. I was hoping to keep my rooks, but... Hmm. Could always defend that. I'll go for the counter attack. If he takes my rook, I have uh I do have check or I could just take his rook. I kind of like the check idea. Um that way I don't lose my knight in the process. 
I think that's a bit better. Horse is his king around too, and then I can get all kinds of pieces like the pawn. Like the pawn here. I did just lose two points of material, but mm, I think I still have the advantage here. He's only got two rooks. I have two minor pieces and a rook, so I think I'm in a better spot. And I'm winning the pawn race as well. Could always pressure his um, his rook as well here. But I'd probably just go for the pawns and start trying to get past pawns. Uh, that's a free pawn. Now, which pawn do I care about more? Probably this pawn so I can start opening up. Start opening the D file for my pawn. I did have F5, H6 there. That may have been the better move. Who knows? Probably play e1 next. I honestly may just try to trade this rook off. Oh, there's a nice fork. Love me a good fork. I won't be surprised if he tries to play something like C1, honestly. I'm glad I kept my knight. Um, I did keep my knight, right? Yeah, I kept my knight when I moved to e7. That's fine. That's totally fine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just burn one move. I don't want to get back ranked. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of an insurance here. I'll go ahead and protect this past pawn here. I know I probably could have done that with um, the bishop on e3 as well. But uh, So now it seems like a good time to start pushing the pawn. All species are on light squares, so I don't have like a great move here. I'll play the most central move I can play. Um, it's defended by the pawn. I'll just keep pushing my pass pawn up the board. A lot of you guys have told me that sort of when you have a passed pawn, put a rook behind it and just get it up the board. <clears throat> Could always try to trade the rook off too. I have a lot of options here. I'm guessing he'll block. I'm surprised. Um, there's check. Okay. 
It's a very interesting move here. I want to get my king involved. Kind of wish I would have just traded the rooks off, honestly. I believe I can just win the pawn game. Yeah, it probably wasn't the move, huh? Nice move by him. Uh, my king is uh really, really blocked in there. Maybe I just start trying to take his pawns off of this fifth rank here. I'm just going to offer him... No, I'm not going to offer him the trade. You know, if he wants to take my pawns, so be it. I'll take two of his. I'm just going to offer him the rook trade. I don't think he'll go for it, but... It seems like he kind of has to push a pawn at this point, right? Or move his king up to d8. Need to be mindful of this fella here too. Oh, um, okay. That's fine. Let me stop this. Probably go rook d5. Start taking these pawns. I could always trade off pawns on this side of the board as well, too. Um, that just seems free. Do I just raise these up or something? No, oh, I can't win there. Can't win there either. He's going to push up and then I'm going to get forced back. So. Bit of a bummer. You know, we'll just make it work somehow. <laughs> I have to go F1. I don't want to get I don't want to get cornered here. What can he really do though? Okay. I got my king out of this little pocket here, so that's good. I imagine he might try to go something like H1. But even then, I believe I can just Um, I can protect. That's fine. Love protection there. Probably go F3 with the king next. Pressure these. This should win a pawn, right? He might go something like a G8. Figured that. No, that's fine. I can just continue to push. Hmm. Oh, a really good move by him. I 
All for the rook trade. Okay, thanks. Uh, that should just be game. I'll just continue to defend. Because I could put him in check. I don't really want him going this way though. Um, I'm just going to get rid of his pawns. Keep my rook on a nice active square. Congratulations, he says. I'll say it's not over. It's not over until the celebration screen shows up. <laughs> That's one thing I've learned. Learned about chess. <laughs> you never know. That's kind of what I figured happening, but this is fine. Um, even if he were to take my pawn, uh, or sorry, excuse me, my bishop, um, I can just run my pawn up the board, and then I shouldn't be too concerned here. Um, let's see. I do need to be mindful of the fact that so he's three squares away from this pawn. Yeah, so this is fine. So I have a passed pawn. Promoted queen now. Oh, this is good. This is ideal. Oh, uh, now this should just be a really easy win. Uh, I need to be careful. Yeah, okay. There was a there was a possibility that he wins my queen there. Um, if he would have went c8 and I went d8, I could have messed that up. Nice. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a hard fought win, I'd say. It's trying my best there. Um, according to the analysis, I sort of had the advantage there most of the game. Looks like there was some possibilities for earlier mate. But uh, okay, so I played at a 83% accuracy. He played 76. I made one blunder. And uh, four great moves. Played like a 1400. He played like 1150. So let's look at the sort of key moments. Rookie one is a mistake. You overlooked a better way to win material through a tactic. Interesting. Well, let's play this out. Maybe take with the kink. No, queen takes f1. Now what? a5? Takes, yeah. Uh, I would imagine he would just recapture this in most normal circumstances. C5. I don't think he would go C5. I think he would just recapture this. Even then, why do I have such a big advantage after giving away a rook? Let me see. Let me just play this out. Okay, so we're even here. We're still even on material. When I say even, I don't mean in the analysis. I just mean um, material count.
Okay, material counts even. I take, he takes. Okay, so he's up to... Ah. Uh, so really that's just a move to gain one point of material. Uh, I don't know if that's worth it. Doesn't he... No, yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> this cough is almost over for me. So that was just a really fancy way to win one point of material. Doesn't quite seem worth it to me. Um, seems a bit advanced, but I'm totally okay with the line that I went with. Yeah, okay. So I had the right idea here. I'm happy about that. Um, I think once I got hit my queen onto b7, he kind of had a hard time after that. So glad to know that that was a good move. I personally felt like he should have moved back to b5 to at least have protection with the pawn there. Um, there was just too many attackers on e4 here. So this was a blunder, huh? Looks like he didn't see it. Um, there was one move I was considering, which was taking the pawn. So this isn't as bad of a blunder, but why is that such a blunder? Why is bishop g5 such a blunder? Let's see what the analysis says. Oh, I just had a free pawn here. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Oh, right. The rook was under attack and I had a free pawn. I didn't even see that. Oh, bummer. Okay. Look at the next miss. Attacking with, with the bishop was a miss here. Let's see what the next best move would have been. You win an opportunity to eventually win a material. Hmm. Okay. Um, a lot of these moves can probably be negligible. Um, I ended up just sort of, you know, getting the win here. So, um, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time in the end games just because there's so many possibilities of like what could happen. Um. It looked like I was on to the right idea. What I figured in this position was that he had the third rank covered. He had a pawn potentially defending h3. Um, so I figured because his pawns um, had these two squares attacked that I didn't want to get into a position where this happens and now it's just mate because I'm stuck. Um, and obviously this would have just been mate. So um, I've lost games before where the pawn has just been blocking the one escape square for the king. And I've kind of learned my lesson from that. Um, so the goal here was just to sort of run the king out into the center of, of the board without getting mated there. So this is the right idea. So even if he mates, you know, the king can still escape. And he's not attacked by the pawn. So that's the idea there. And honestly, he probably still would have had a chance if he wouldn't have given up this rook. Personally, I feel like he should have just kept going for the bishop. I think he would have had a chance if he just tried to get the bishop off the board. So. Cool. Well, this was a good one. This was a fun game. Um, kind of got me a little bit sweaty. <laughs> I'm being totally honest. But it was... Uh, Nice game. Always nice to get a win. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching and uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow.